Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to explain how to solve any problem, stoichiometry problems using conversion factor method. All right, we have two types of problems in stoichiometry. The first type, which you can see here, is mole mole calculation. And the second type is mass mass calculation. So let's start with the first type. In this type of question, we will get a um, chemical reaction and they give us the number of moles for one of the reactants and they ask us to find the number of moles for one of the products or vice versa. So in this case, the only thing we need to do is just to find, uh, to look at the balanced chemical reaction and find the mole ratio. And then we use that and solve this type of question very easily. I'm gonna do an example in a minute. And the second type of the problems we might get in the stoichiometry are mass mass calculation problems. So in this type, we have uh, a chemical reaction again, but in this case, they give us the mass of one of the product, uh, one of the reactant, and they ask us to find the mass of one of the products or vice versa. They, give, they can give us the mass of one of the product and they ask you to find the mass of the reactant, one of the reactant. Okay, so in this case, we solve in three step. We solve this problem in three step. So in, for example, here, I have the mass of A. So the first step is to find the number of moles of A in a small and a stands for a number of moles. So the first thing we need to do is to find the number of moles. And step number two, we need to find the number of moles for the product, for the B, by using mole ratio. And then this step number three is to go from moles to grams by just using the molar mass of the compound. Of the, in this case, we have to use the molar mass of B and solve this question. I'm gonna do example. So let's get started. Before doing examples, let's make sure you know how mole ratio works. So look at this balanced equation. N2 plus TH2 produces 2NH3. You know, the mole uh, ratio is basically the coefficient of each of this compound in this reaction. So what is the mole ratio here? The mole ratio is one, three, two. This means I need one mole N2 plus three moles of H2 in order to be able to produce two moles of NH3. So let's say if I have three moles of N2, what happens? How many moles of H2 and NH3 do I need? So I have three moles of N2 plus, how many moles of H2 do I need? So let's see what happens here. The ratio is one, three, two. So I multiplied this one by three and I got this. I have to multiply all of them by three. So three times three is nine. So I will need nine moles of H2 in order to produce how many moles of NH3? Two times three is six. I need, uh, I can produce six moles of NH3. So this is how mole ratio works. Hopefully you are familiar with this. So let's get into the examples involving stoichiometry. Here is the first one. It says how many moles of water will be produced if 4.5 moles of CO2 reacts with NH3. The balanced uh, chemical equation is given here. So let's write down our given information. So we have 4.5 moles of CO2. Let's write that down. I have 4.5 mole of CO2. And I need to find the number of moles for H2O. So the number of moles of H2O is required. So in this case, we are going from moles to moles. So this is the first type of the problems we talked about. It's this, this type, the first type of problems, the easy one. So how can we solve this? We're gonna use the conversion factor method. The formula for conversion factor method is just given value, whatever is given in the question, times conversion factor, equals our required value. 
So what is given here? The given value is the number of moles for CO2, right? So let's write that down. I have 4.5 mole of CO2 times my conversion factor. What is my conversion factor? So my conversion fa factor is basically my mole ratio here. Let's see what is the mole ratio between CO2 and H2O. So this, this reaction is balanced. So for each one mole CO2, one mole CO2 will get one mole H2O. So what is the conversion factor? We can say one mole, let's just see, CO2 over one mole H2O. Or we can just say, flip it, right side by the left side. We can say one mole H2O over one mole CO2. Both of these conversion factors are correct. But depending on the question, we have to choose which one works for us. So over here, I need to get rid of the moles of CO2 and, con and convert it to moles of H2O. So that's why I need moles of CO2 in denominator. So I have to go with this one, moles of CO2 in denominator, this conversion factor. So for each one mole H2O, I have one mole CO2. Again, this is just the mole ratio between CO2 and H2O. And as you know, mole of CO2 and mole of CO2 cancel each other out, and we will end up with 4.5 times 1 over 1, which is just 4.5 mole H2O. This is our answer. That's how we solve this type of problems. Let's move on to the next type of problems. This one, when we have, when they give out the mass of a product and they ask us to find the mass of the reactant or vice versa. Here is the question. How many grams of oxygen will be produced if one kilogram of CO2 reacts with water? Again, we have the balanced chemical equation here. Let's write down our given information. I have one kilogram of CO2, so let's write that down. And just pay attention, we need the units to be, the unit should be in grams. So one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. Let's write that down. I have 1,000 grams of CO2. I'm looking for the grams of oxygen. So I'm looking for the mass of oxygen. So we're going from mass to mass, the second type of problems. We said we solve this in three steps. So the first thing we need to do is, I have the mass of this compound. The first thing we need to do is to find the number of moles of this compound. So the num I need to find, step number one, find the number of moles of CO2. Step number two, I need to find the number of moles of the product, which is O2. So NO2, that's number of moles for O2. I need to find that. And the third step is to just find the mass of O2. How can I get a number of moles? I mean, how can we do? Okay, again, step number one, From if I want to go from grams, from mass to moles, I can just use the molar mass, right? And if I want to go from number of moles of CO2, and get the number of moles for a different compound, which is O2, I have to use mole ratio. And if I wanna go from number of moles of oxygen to mass of oxygen, I just need the molar mass of oxygen. So let's solve this step by step. Let's start with step number one. So in step one, I have mass of CO2 and I need the number of moles of CO2. So let's do that. So always, when we go from mass uh, to moles or moles to mass, the first thing we need to do is to find the molar mass of that compound. So I need molar mass of CO2, which is just one atom of carbon, which is 12.01 plus two atoms of 
uh, oxygen, which is 16.00. So molar mass of CO2 is 44.01 grams per mole. Again, this means one mole of CO2 equals, uh, or it has a mass of 44.01 gram. Okay, so let's solve this. Again, using conversion factor method, our given value, which is the mass of CO2, 1000 grams CO2 times our conversion factor. What is our conversion factor here? Conversion factor is the relation between grams and moles for CO2, which is over here. I can say one mole of CO2 over 44.01 grams of CO2 or vice versa. But here I need grams CO2 to be in denominator. So I go with this one. I go with 44.01 grams of CO2 in denominator. And in numerator, I have one mole CO2. And as you know, this cancels this one. And we will end up with just 1000 times one divided by 44.01, which is, I believe it's 22.7722. So 22.722 moles of CO2. So this is the number of moles of CO2. We did step number one. Now we have to do step number two. I have the number of moles of CO2. I need to find the number of moles of oxygen. So let's do that. Step two. Step one, and this is the step two. I need, uh, I mean, I have number of moles for CO2. I need to find the number of moles of O2. So our given value here is the number of moles of CO2, right? So let's write that down. 22.722 mole of CO2 times the conversion factor, which is my mole ratio between O2 and CO2. Let's see what is that. The mole, the mole ratio between CO2 and O2, as you can see in the equation, for each six molecules, six moles of CO2, I will get six moles of O2. So six mole of CO2 produces six mole of O2. So our conversion factor is just six over six. And I can say mole CO2 on the top, mole O2 on the bottom, or vice versa. But in this case, I need this fraction because I need to get rid of the mole of CO2. I don't need, I mean, I need the, the other one. So six mole of CO2 should be in the denominator. Six mole of O2 should be on the top. So let's write that down. More CO2 should be in the denominator. And smalls of O2 should be on the top. So these two can cancel each other out. And we will end up with, and you know, six over six is just one. So they can just simplify. And our answer is just 22.722 mole oxygen. So this is step number two. We find the number of moles for oxygen. So step number three is to find the mass of oxygen. So how can we do that? Step three, I have the number of moles for oxygen. So I need to find the mass of oxygen, O2. So our given value is, 22.722 times my conversion factor. So my conversion factor is the relation or the ratio between grams and moles for O2. So first thing we need to do is to find the molar mass of O2, which is two times 16.00 is just 32.00 grams per mole. So my conversion factor here is, okay, let me just, fix this, this is 22.722 moles of O2 times my conversion factor, 
as each mole of O2 is 32 grams, right? So I need moles of O2 in denominator. So I write one mole O2 in denominator and 32.00 grams of O2 on the top. So then this cancels this one. And our answer is just 22.722 times 32 divided by one, which is seven to seven grams of oxygen. This is our final answer for this question. This is our final answer for this question. That's how we solve this. Okay, also we can do everything in one step if you want. I mean, not one step. We did this three steps separately. We can do it all together. So I can just say, let's do, let's do all of it in one, in all three steps together. So our given information was this, 1,000 grams of CO2. Let's write that down. 1,000 grams of CO2, I can say, times conversion factor. My first conversion factor. My first conversion factor is I have grams of CO2. I need to convert it to moles of CO2. So what should I do? I need the conversion factor between the fact, uh, which is the ratio between grams of CO2 and moles of CO2. I already, we already found that, which is one mole CO2 on the top. And I have 44.01 grams of CO2 the bottom. As you know, grams of CO2 and grams of CO2, they cancel each other out. And then we will end up with the moles of CO2, but we are not done. We have another conversion factor. I'm not looking for more of CO2. The next is to find the mole of O2. So I have to use the mole ratio between CO2 and O2, which we already found that is six over six. And I need more of CO2 in the bottom and more of O2 on the top because I need to get rid of CO2, right? So this mole of CO2 cancels this one. We will end up with moles of O2. We're not done. We have to multiply this by another conversion factor in order to get the mass of O2. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the mass of O2. So I have, if I multiply these numbers and divide and do this calculation, I will end up with moles of O2. So I need one more conversion factor, which is mole of O2 on the bottom. So one mole O2 in the bottom and the number of grams by using the molar mass, as you know, on the top, which is 32, right? 32.00 grams O2. So the smalls of O2 cancels the smalls of O2. So what we end up with is just the grams of O2. So 1000 times one times six times 32 divided by 44, oops, Basically, we do not need two times six because this six and this six can just simplify. So again, I have 1,000 times 32 divided by 44.01. If you put this in your calculator, you will get this answer. You have to get the same exact same answer, which is 727, and it's grams oxygen, grams oxygen. This is your answer. So this is how we do it. Uh, in one formula, basically. We did it step by step, step one, step two, step three. And then in this case, we did it all together. So it's up to you. You can do it step by step separately, or you can do everything. If it's easy for you, you can do everything together at once. And you'll end up with the same exact same answer. That's how we do it. Thanks for watching.